Okay, next we have a couple of presentations. The first is my annual favorite. I know Mr. Filipsack joins me in that welcoming David Gannon, our auditor for our fiscal year 2016 comprehensive annual financial report and auditor's report. But at first, Mr. Crotchfelt, you're going to do some introductions? Yeah. Thank you. And we welcome Mr. Crotchfelt back. He just recently returned from... Some minor surgery. A minor yeah. surgery. Oh. I'm happy to be back. Was that a lobotomy? <laughs> oh, I'm Dr. sorry. Oh, that's <laughs> politically incorrect. Well, well, moving on to, to the uh, 2016 conference. Joe, you do not have to answer that. Your lobotomy is your own business. <laughs> You'll just hear about it in tomorrow's Global Connect. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a team player. Whatever you know, whatever you need, Dr. Valeski. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, as always, before Dave does his uh, audit presentation, uh, you know, I do a, a summary of the comprehensive annual financial report, a snapshot of the operations from the 2016 year. So um, you know, feel free, any questions as I'm going through, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So we have the, the funds in the audit are comprised of uh, governmental funds, proprietary funds, uh, I'll go over the governmental funds uh, first. Uh, you have the general fund, the special <coughs> revenue fund, capital projects, and the debt service. So I'll go over a snapshot of those funds uh, individually. The general fund is the fund that uh, captures the day-to-day -day operations, salary, benefits, uh, custodial, maintenance and grounds, utilities, supplies, uh, uh, those day-to-day -day operations, expenditures that uh, keep the district operating. All right, the, the total expenditures for the 2016 year uh, was 156,000, uh, I'm sorry, 156 million dollars. Uh, that's slightly up from last year. We ended the year with a fund balance of 21 million and change. That's slightly down from the prior year. Uh, the prior year was uh, $22.8 million. Fund balance is comprised of <coughs> several components. Uh, $6.8 million for the capital reserve fund. Uh, you'll notice during the year, the board approves uh, withdrawals from the capital reserve, and at the end of the year, a transfer in. Uh, that allows the, the district to put money aside for uh, building improvements, uh, you know, whether it be security, infrastructure, uh, HVAC updates uh, throughout the schools. So, uh, yeah, and really based on uh, what limitations we have, uh, we're constricted by the state uh, without doing a bond referendum. This is one of the only ways we can put money aside to address some of those needs for our facilities. So, uh, that's basically the same amount that we ended the prior year with. 2.3 million for reserves for encumbrances. Those are open purchase orders. Uh, it's not an accounts payable. It's an order that the district placed that uh, is open, it's valid, uh, that we didn't receive the, the goods or services. Most of that 2.3 million uh, relates to construction projects that were in the general fund. Uh, that is about half the amount from the prior year, and it's all timing of when construction projects are taking place. So um, even though it's half, there's nothing to be alarmed about, uh, and they're all valid uh, open orders. 3.1 million for uh, legally re uh, required. Uh, that's the 2% reserve that uh, you'll hear Mr. Giuliano often say during the budget presentations. Um, the state requires us to have that 2% in reserve in case of you know, a catastrophic emergency. Um, we had 4.3 million. Uh, that's being applied to the current, uh, I'm sorry, that was applied in the 2016 uh, budget and another 2.3 that's in the current year. Uh, those numbers are uh, the same as the prior year. Special Revenue Fund, those are uh, grants, gifts, uh, IDEA, No Child Left Behind, uh, PTA gifts, the Ed Foundation, um, the adult life skills grant, uh, we account for those in a separate fund. 
because there's restrictions. We just can't spend that money as we please. It has, you know, they're all, the budgets are approved by the granting agency uh, for uh, specific purposes. So the major grants for 2016, IDA, $2 million. It was up from the prior year. NCLB, uh, 900,000. That was an increase of 94,000. Uh, EBF, 83,000. PTA, 30,000. And then the adult basic uh, education grant, uh, 169,000. That was a slight increase from the prior year. Now with the, the grant funds, there's a difference between the awards and what we spend, all right? And just because we're awarded $2 million, if we don't spend all that money, we can carry it over and it counts as the expenditure. So, um, you know, don't, don't be alarmed from the prior slide saying, okay, we were awarded, you know, $90,000 from EBF, but we only spent 75. You know, it's a timing issue. So for expenditures, uh, we had 8.5 million total, EBF 75,000, the PTA grants uh, accounted for 44,000. Federal, which is your IDA and your No Child Left Behind, 3.1 million. State, 270,000. And then other, 4.9. Other um, is comprised of our interlocal inter service agreements, uh, whether it be financing, you know, we, we did some major financing with the township, uh, lease purchase, uh, things that are not uh, capital in nature. So uh, that's a, a number that's a little bit up from the prior year. Any questions so far? We're, we're all good. Everybody is still awake. <laughs> capital projects. So this fund is uh, used to account for capital outlay, including acquisition and construction of capital facilities and other <coughs> capital assets. So um, we had total expenditures of 4.2 million. And they were mainly comprised of the high school gym renovations, security projects throughout the district, and uh, the second year projects for HVAC and electrical upgrades at Chittick and Irwin. And that was up from the prior year. Debt service, uh, commonly referred to as our mortgage account, uh, to put it into terms that we're all familiar with. Um, this account, you know, expenditures for principal and interest on bonds that uh, were voter approved. So the balance as of June 30th, 2016, we had bonds payable of 79.5 million, and they were comprised of three uh, main issue, uh, bond issues. And we had capital leases of uh, 9.5 million. Uh, often, every year, especially uh, Kurt, you, you ask, you know, what is our debt limit? Are we, do we have too much debt out there? We're still in great shape. Um, the law allows us to have 4% of the average equalized value. The current debt limit is 287 million. We are at 84 million, just over 84 million, which represents just under 30% of the debt limit. Uh, the legal debt margin, what we have left, to issue if we chose to go out for a bond referendum is 200 million or almost 70.1%. So again, we're in uh, great shape there. We don't have too much debt out there. Um, so that, that's a good thing. So we move on to the enterprise funds. Uh, the enterprise fund consists of child nutrition and community programs. Uh, child Nutrition had a, a very good year. We had total operating revenues of $1.9 million, almost you know, $2 million in operational revenue, uh, $857,000 from non-operating. The non-operating consists of the subsidies for the uh, federal and state lunch programs. Uh, total operating expenditures of $2.6 million. Uh, it's important to note that revenue was up in both categories and our expenditures were down. So. It's kind of, you know, the best case scenario for both. We had a change in net position or profit of 157,000. Now you'll remember last year we had a $23,000 loss. So that's a significant turnaround um, and really, you know, tip of the hat to the staff, 
to Aramark uh, to Evocate. It was a total, you know, team effort um, and something that the district should be proud of. I'm sorry, Joe, could you just um, <clears throat> go back to one slide to the debt? Sure. <clears throat> I'll get there. There we go. Debt service. Um, just to put it in a very simple term so anyone watching understands, we're allowed to have what percentage of debt and we have what percentage? Okay. So let's not get bogged down with the 4% of average okay. equal because that's a formula. The bottom line is we could have $287 million That's what the debt. law says. Yes. And we and have. right now we have $84 okay. million. Thank you. So we're $200 million below what the law says our maximum could be. Perfect, thank you. Fast forward. So we had total mm -hmm. meals served uh, for lunch, uh, 534,000, that's up, and breakfast, uh, 34,000. That's up about 9,000 meals. Uh, the high school program was expanded. Uh, and when Jessica does her presentation, she'll talk about where we're going and hopefully going for breakfast. So some exciting things happening. Um, the other enterprise fund is community programs. Uh, the total operating revenues, 3.1 million. Uh, early morning program uh, <coughs> took in 600,000. The after school kids encore, 1.2, almost 1.3 million. JM PAC, 557,000. Early learning academy, 500,000, and then other, which is like the summer camps, uh, enrichment programs, 139,000. Uh, we had total expenditures of 2.4. Uh, it's important to note that the revenue did go up, but our expenditures had a, an increase uh, for the 2016 year. We had a net change of 163,000, which is less than the prior year. The prior year was about 400,000. So. Uh, and, and uh, so the district is taking steps and looking at things on uh, how to manage that and get it back to where. To, to we what do it we to attribute be. that large decline? Uh, to the increase in expenditures. Which um, which expenditures in particular? Uh, the main line was salary. Uh, the the district had implemented some additional nursing services based on need, mm -hmm. uh, which is expensive. Um, uh, some additional aids based on enrollment. So, um, but we're, we're looking to streamline those things and uh, looking at different options with still providing a, a first class program, but trying to not minimize, but manage those expenditures. Sure. I'm just not sure I'm following the numbers that there's 3.1 million revenues and 2.5 million in expenses and the net Difference uh, because one component that you're not seeing, the uh, community programs made a $500,000 uh, contribution to, to the general to the fund. The general fund, and oh. we do that every okay. year. Okay. Uh, no, so we're not just not showing that, that dollar amount. It's just not uh, showing the half million dollars that was right. moved. So, um, because that that's considered a so the a real non-operating expenditure. Right, it's below the line. Okay, okay, but it's still it's still it, it's still a money moving out. So the actual profit was like 600. Before the, the transfer. Okay, but, well, that, that's a story to tell. Well, it, yes, but you, we also have to remember that contribution to the district. The district does not pay, uh, charge those programs. Hold on a second. We have a, a, a flashing. <laughs> uh, no, but, but we're not obligated to move that money. No, but it is, it's approved during the budget, and it, it's historically <coughs> been an amount going back the last uh, 10 years, I right. would say. Right, I know. At, at, and at this point, the, I, I think it's important to note that um, it has become a regular part of the general fund budget. Mm -hmm. So to not make that transfer would have a de detrimental impact on operations. Right. But I mean, the, the point there is, though, that, that that half million is coming from these operations. Correct. Right. Yes. Which is a positive <laughs> contribution to <coughs> lowering the expenses yes. for mm -hmm. taxpayers. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a very good point. Um, it is a significant contribution, and it's also important to note yeah, the, the profit for the year was, was down compared to the prior years, but we still have a healthy uh, balance, a retained earnings balance in that uh, enterprise fund. So and that's something we always monitor when we're doing the budget. You know, we always have that conversation uh, at the finance committee level 
uh, and sometimes at the board level, uh, about you know, how much can we transfer? What, what's the healthy balance? Because we never want to take too much and then uh, have either child nutrition or community programs go into a deficit because the general fund cannot contribute to their operations. So, okay. Right. Financial facts, uh, we had total inflows of 276 million, outflows of 279 million, and then cash on hand, 30.6 million. That's slightly down from the prior year. Now, I, I know my reaction, oh my God, $30 million, that's great. But you have to take that into context of, you know, our general operating fund is 150 million plus. Our debt service payments are spent. So 30 million is you know, two months. You know? So if we didn't have any income coming in, we would operate probably two, two and a half months before we had an issue, which is not a long time. So I don't want people to think, you know, we're that money is just stand, you know, holding in the district. And it has to do with open encumbrances, payables. Um, so I think it's a, the balance is where it needs to be. And we're fortunate because a lot of districts throughout the state have to borrow money just to meet payroll at the end of the year because of the uh, deferral of state aid payments and so forth. So uh, we're, we're in a good spot there. And, and Joe, wasn't there indeed a time, I don't know how many years ago, where the state did withhold a few months of yeah. it, it's two payments which equates at, to one month right at the end yeah. of the year and yeah. forced districts across the state in panic and we were in a very good position yeah. well i think one thing that the board is uh, very well aware of we never want to count on the state uh to come through you know they've taken state aid they defer payments uh whether it's in accordance with accounting principles or not, you know, that's on another level. But, you know, we, we have to make sure that we can operate and, you know, take care of our financial requirements. So some other uh, facts, you know, we manage over 25 bank accounts. Uh, we do all the compliance in-house for quarterly tax filings, uh, Affordable Care Act uh, requirements. We issue approximately 2,100 W-2s and 1099 forms, uh, process over 800 journal entries a year, 3,900 registrations for clubs and activities, 1,600 athletic and band registrations, uh, 1,100 early morning uh, and after school registrations, 1,000 plus school enrichment registrations, uh, 6,000 purchase orders, 18,000 invoices, 5,000 checks are issued through accounts payable, 37,000 payroll checks and direct deposits, 12,000 plus timesheets are processed each year, 10,000 attendance slips. Uh, we do numerous bids and renewals and requests for proposals, requests for quotes, uh, student service providers, and everything on that list is all governed by a state regulation or a grant regulation it's not as easy as just saying, oh, we have a check to be paid, cut a check. There's multiple steps. Uh, it's a very deliberate process. And we are fortunate enough to be audited every year by an independent auditor. And we turn over all those records. And that leads into Dave's presentation, unless you have any questions. Thanks. So every year I'm very envious of Joe, because mm -hmm. this is a joint presentation. He gets to do all the really interesting stuff, <laughs> and he leads, leaves me with all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as Joe mentioned, you know, we, every year we do the audit. It's a statutory requirement. Uh, the audit process takes probably a little over five weeks of time. Um, so can you imagine, you know, during that time, uh, our requests are numerous. Uh, it's, you know, to a certain extent, it interferes with people's days. I mean, if you could imagine uh, if, you know, three or four people all of a sudden show up at your office every day for five weeks and constantly ask for information, you know, it's, it's a difficult process. Uh, but what I would tell you is that we receive really excellent cooperation uh, from the district staff. Uh, we, we, we are primary uh, contacts within the district during this process. 
uh, is Mr. Crotchfelt and Ms. Rosenvin uh, and their staff. Uh, I, I will tell you that uh, you're very lucky to have uh, the type of staff that you do. Uh, they're very diligent and they very much take their responsibilities as public stewards of public funds very seriously. Uh, they are, you know, they scrutinize things uh, very tightly. Uh, and I would tell you that, you know, many districts would be envious of some of the professionals that you've hired. Um, you know, and I would tell you that, you know, again, the order process is important. And that is, that is you know, that, that is very evident in the district that they take the order very seriously. Uh, I would tell you Dr. Valeski and Mr. Juliana, you know, really set the tone at the top to make sure that our requests are uh, treated with priority. Uh, if we have issues during the audit process and we go to them, they take those items very seriously, uh, very matter-of-factly, and, and, and really follow up on those items. So, you know, from a board perspective, I think it's important for you to know the type of individuals that you've hired, uh, and more importantly, you've been able to retain over a number of years. Uh, that's equally as impressive. Uh, so, you know, no audit can get done without uh, the cooperation of staff, and we receive excellent cooperation. Uh, and, you know, of course, <coughs> although we, we, we interact mostly with the finance office, we do, you know, it is an audit of the entire district. Uh, various departments in some way or another get touched by the audit. Uh, so our, <coughs> our objectives of our audit, you know, sometimes it gets a little confusing as, well, what's the objective? Are you doing a forensic audit? Are you doing a performance audit? Uh, the statutory audit is really focused on providing opinion on the financial statements. Uh, providing some reporting in accordance with governing warning standards that's required uh, when you receive more than $100,000 of grants in a given year. Uh, we also, <coughs> because the district receives over $750,000 of both federal and state awards, we're also required to perform a specific federal and state grant audit. Uh, and I've just listed a couple of the <coughs> standards uh, that we have to follow during our audits. Uh, so, the, the, you know, the main document uh, that's provided to you, the Comprehensive Annual Finance Report. Uh, there's four distinct sections within the report. Uh, the first section is the introduction section that's, you know, primarily handled by um, the finance office. Uh, and within that is, is you know, it, it kind of gives you the non-financial type person uh, an ability to look at what's going on in the district, all the great things that are happening. Uh, there's about four pages of information uh, celebrating the uh, achievements of your students and staff uh, from, you know, the, the academics, the arts, and the athletics perspective. Uh, the finance office also uh, received a couple awards during the year. Uh, for the last three years, they received the uh, Certificate of Excellence from International ASBO. Uh, and for the first time, they actually submitted another uh, application for the Certificate of Achievement in the GFOA from the Government, uh, Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, and they, they, they were awarded that, that, that award. Uh, and it's important to note, these are, these are voluntary programs. Uh, and really what that signifies is the district's commitment to transparency, uh, because these, 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 the reports go to these two independent reviewers. Uh, and they actually independently look at your financial statements to make sure that you're following all the required accounting guidance. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, a good, it's a nice achievement. The second section is the financial section that provides our opinion on uh, financial statements, uh, provides a section of, for management's discussion and analysis uh, that provides management the ability to kind of just explain what happened during the year more in simplistic terms. Uh, there's basic financial statement information. Uh, there's footnotes. Now that you know, they now number 40 pages long, uh, mostly thankful to uh, the pension standards. Um, and then there's, there's certain budgetary information as well that's important uh, to understand and know. <clears throat> and then the third section is the statistical section. Uh, that's about 20 different schedules of various information from a financial, operational, debt, uh, and revenue type uh, information. And for, for, for often enough, there's actually 10 years worth of data. So it gives you a really good baseline and understanding of what's happened over 10 years. Uh, the last section is the single audit section, and again, that just talks a little bit more about our specific um, audits over the federal and state grant programs. So the results of the audit, <clears throat> we
We've issued an unmodified opinion on the financial statements. What that means is the financial statements provided to us and ordered by us are in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. It's called considered a clean opinion. It's the best opinion that you want. Uh, it means that there wasn't information in there that we had to take exception to. Uh, there was only one adjusting journal entry. The financial records of the district is maintained in very, very good condition. Great, great condition. Not, not very good, great condition. Uh, so, you know, those monthly reports that you get uh, from administration, you can guarantee that those are accurate and that you're making decisions based on accurate information. Uh, districts, and again, when Joe went through the, sh the slide, the district's in an excellent financial position. Uh, he noted at one point that, you know, fund balance decreased year over year, uh, but that was larger because encumbrances decreased. Uh, so the actual core financial fund balance, you know, was relatively the same. Uh, this was the second year of GASB 68, just as an informational note. Uh, we all know the struggles that the state has with uh, funding the net pension liability and, and how that continues to grow. Uh, and just to give you an example, you know, this year the district's proportionate share uh, for the PRS net pension liability is $45 million, and that was an increase from the previous year of $9 million. Uh, so just on a local level, you can see how that, how that grows. One of the other reports that we're required to issue is, of course, the government warning standards. Uh, in that report would be uh, our avenue to disclose to you whether there's any significant findings or material weaknesses. I'm happy to report to you that there were none of those. Uh, internal controls within the district are operating, you know, in very, very well, operating as intended. Uh, we've issued a third report on compliance. Again, our, we do a, a specific federal and state grant audit. Uh, that, that opinion is unmodified as well. So the major programs that we tested as part of our, our single audit, we didn't have any compliance exceptions or any material exceptions. Uh, lastly, there's a, 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 another report we issue that's in a smaller, a smaller report. Uh, and that's all where the, all the other matters go. Uh, so things that are not material weaknesses, not sufficiencies, other matters, uh, other opportunities for improvement, those get noted there. Uh, we have four that the district's going to take corrective action on, uh, two related to student activity funds, one human resources, and one community program. Uh, with that, if there's any specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Any particular findings? You know, any, anything of concern this year? Or? Well, there, there was four items right. that require corrective action. Uh, the two student activity funds are uh, non-compliance with immaterial amounts, uh, that there are specific board policies, mm -hmm. and those board policies weren't necessarily followed. Uh, community programs, uh, some of the documentation related to uh, the PAC and how, those, how special events get billed, documentation can be improved, uh, so that supports the billings. Uh, and the fourth one relates to uh, an overpayment to an employee that was uh, uncovered by the district's into controls, but not on a timely basis. Okay. How much discretion, you mentioned board policy, how much discretion do we have in setting some of our financial record keeping policies versus what we are required to do? Does that relate specifically to student activity funds? To accounting, accounting generally. In other words, you know, there's some things we have in terms of policy when we might expect to recognize or, or mm -hmm. et cetera, but you know, where does our discretion stop and like, law come in or accounting? So there's, there's some very specific uh, requirements under uh, New Jersey Administrative Code over a variety of areas, including student activity funds and general bookkeeping. Uh, so those would be the baseline type requirements, and they're extensive, and there's a lot of requirements encased in there. Uh, there's a lot of requirements encased in statute as well. Uh, but you know, I would say that I don't. I don't think there's any board policies necessarily that you have uh, that are so significantly different. I mean, I, I would say, especially with student activity funds, they're, they're probably more detailed than many other districts, uh, provide more bright line type uh, examples of what to do and what not to do. Uh, sometimes when there's vagueness, uh, that could create issues. Uh, so anytime that you can create more bright lines for uh, employees to follow, it probably would, it's probably preferable. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Flipsack. I know how hard it is sometimes for an order to say excellent. 
And I'm glad that it's the excellent cooperation we have with the audit department. Uh, and the word great with the condition of our reports that speaks well for our district. Um, Joe took my thunder away from all the debt servicing. So I really have very little to follow up on that. But um, I mentioned it before that I thought your management report is clean, concise, and I appreciate that uh, the way it's delivered. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you're in our school district. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I make a comment? Yeah. Uh, as a superintendent, I would absolutely be remiss if I didn't express my really sincere appreciation for the um, level of expertise that both Joe and Tara bring to the finance department. And also, Mr. Giuliana, as the architect for creating the environment to get these high quality people in the district uh, to operate with the autonomy that they need to. Uh, and to uh, have the influence over the, the entire district to make sure that we're all compliant. I sleep better at night knowing that finances are not going to be my immediate demise. It'll be my own <laughs> ignorance that will be my immediate demise. <laughs> so thank you very much. You're on a roll this evening, aren't you? I am. <laughs> Mrs. Becker. I also want to um, thank um, Bernie, Joe Tara, and their entire staff for the integrity uh, and dedication they bring to the work they do. You brought up a very, very in important point when you said that we can trust that the amounts of money that are reported to us in the various funds and line items each meeting are accurate. And that's so important because so much of what we do is based on that and um, the fact that we can not just trust that but have it confirmed by an outside auditor every year is, is just crucial. And thank you. Anyone else? I asked the question earlier about um, regulation versus policy and, and you extracted some of what I wanted was the complexity and volume of law that our folks out here have to be familiar with in putting our budget together and keeping our books, it is ridiculously complicated and voluminous. And the fact that you do this every year, keeping up with the changes, et cetera, it's pretty cool, okay? And your opinion, and I appreciate your work too, um, you, you make our audit, well, I, look, Kurt and I love to listen to you all day, <laughs> but for those that would rather listen to something else, um, I think you make it understandable and you sort of bring out how difficult their, their job is. So we appreciate it from everybody. So thanks. All right. Awesome. Well, I think that's that's it for the audit. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Have a great holiday. Next. Thank you.